Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I have a not so functional setup to show you because it's stinking cute. Okay, it's something I have to show you. Um, yeah, I came up with something that turned out to look really, really cute. It's gonna stress me out a little, but it's too cute not to try it out. Maybe it's gonna work out much better for you guys than for me because, um, yeah. I'm gonna tell you all about the struggles that I'm gonna have with this little cute setup here. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, so let's let's get to the point, shall we? I was in a flower shop the other day and I saw these clay pots and I thought, wouldn't my cool growers stay a little cooler in clay pots? They would. They would also dry up faster. But maybe that is a trade-off that I'm willing to accept. And then I saw these and then I thought, wait a second. Yes, I'm doing this. <laughs> I thought, well, what tiny little cool grower plant I have that fits into this setup? The Dendrobium Cuthbertoni hybrids. So cute. Done. So, I decided to place my Dendrobium Cuthbertoni into this setup and see how we go about it. This is just the spur of the moment idea that I thought looks cute. I'm gonna show it to you, at least for the video. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it long term. There are some benefits. But there are some disadvantages which I'm gonna talk to you guys about. So, let's get to repotting one of these guys and I'll tell you all about the thoughts that I have in my head because I have a lot of thoughts. And while I'm putting my gloves on, why don't you like and subscribe? It's completely free, costs you nothing and you might see some videos that you might find entertaining. Who knows? You never know until you try, right? But if you're feeling a little extra and you can, do consider further supporting the channel by becoming a member, checking out the affiliate links down below, checking out the merch, or using the super thanks option below my videos. Righty then. So, whew, ran out of breath. A little backstory to the Dendrobium Cuthbertoni. It is a wonderful Dendrobium. I want to grow it so badly. It is, however, a bit of a cooler grower and I live in an oven. But I have some aces up my sleeve. If you missed my video about the cool growing setup, you can check it down below. I have some aces up my sleeve. Will these guys do okay for me? I don't know. I want to try because I truly, truly, truly like them. It's one of my favorite dendrobiums, honestly, and the hybrids. And yeah, I only have hybrids. I don't have the pure Cusbertoni. They're said to be more tolerant, especially to warmth, than the actual species. So. Who knows, I'm giving it a good go, but I was actually considering to get some clay pots for my Mastavalias and the Cuthbertonis because unglazed clay pots absorb a lot of water. I think you can tell that this guy is fully soaked, fully wet. It is very cold to the touch because it's such a porous material that not only it absorbs water very fast, but it also promotes evaporation a lot a lot a lot and through evaporation temperature goes down this guy is in a continuous state of evaporation if it's wet and it's constantly cold like i can keep my hands on it and i will now warm it up because it's continuously losing water and the temperature is always going down which sounds in theory great for cool growers having roots staying cool that sounds great the caveat is it's losing water. So I will have to water it very, very frequently because evaporation rates are wild. It's very dry, it's very hot. Water goes like this. Where did it go? Nobody knows. It just goes, <laughs> goes in the air. Uh, so as nice as clay pots sound, they do have some drawbacks. I've tried growing orchids in clay pots in the past with some success, but you know, it was a little bit hassling. Reason why, you know, this combination makes sense. It's a self-watering terracotta pot. I can leave water here and if I'm lucky, it's still gonna be here in the next two days. <laughs> so that's my thought process. Theoretically, it should be good. It absolutely should work with these types of orchids. Many people use clay pots. The problem is I personally don't really work with clay pots unless what I'm doing here is actually a good idea. I'm yet to decide if it's a good idea. It's an idea. I don't know if it's good. We'll see. Another drawback will be that this is transparent. It's gonna accumulate cyanobacteria. However, I am relying on the fact that the Cuthbert Sony doesn't need a lot of fertilizer 
at all, like at all. Like it needs very little fertilizer. It doesn't really grow much. It's a small orchid, grows very slow. The flowers last a year or something on the orchid. So it's not in a hurry to put out this wild amount of vegetative growth. It does not need a lot of fertilizer at all. So I'm hoping that the lack of fertilizer in the, let's say, reservoir will not lead me to a lot of algae like in three days. If I do get, which I will, I will get algae. If I do get a little algae, it's very easy to just remove this, wash the bowl and hey presto, we're done. If I don't need to do this every week, then I'm good. You know, I can do it every month. I think I have time to do that. We'll see. Also, the wick, I can remove it. Notice how I didn't put a wick on this. I'm gonna show you at the end how we put it. The wick is removable and replaceable. So if it gets algae, I'll just wash it with some dish detergent and we're done. This is microfiber, lasts forever if you treat it right. It does not disintegrate um, and it's washable, which is what I intend to do. So, oh, also, this guy is prone to having salt accumulations and algae. But from time to time, I can clean it a little. Salt accumulations, I don't really care much about. It gives a nice aspect to the pot. But I'm not using a lot of fertilizer and I'm also using only reverse osmosis water, no tap water. So again, in theory, accumulations will not be as profound as I used to have them. And even if I do, it's just two orchids. I can wash it really fast with a sponge at the sink, right? Right? I don't know. I don't know if I'm up for the challenge, but I'm willing to give it a try because they're stinking cute. And indeed, there is a difference in temperature between plastic pots and clay pots. Remember I showed you I have Mastavalias in plastic pots? I took divisions. Half of them are in clay pots. Just uh, for some research. Right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to reuse this medium. It's fresh, it's brand new. I'm not gonna throw it away. I will have medium lift, which I'm gonna reuse with a Phalaenopsis. Never do that. But I'm gonna use it with a flower shop Phalaenopsis because sphagnum moss is very expensive. I cannot find it very often. So that's why I'm re reusing it. I have a lot of roots, look at that. Little guy is growing. He's doing good, you guys. I told you they, they do well, surprisingly enough, for the heat wave, right? He's doing well. Wow, okay. So I'm going to be reusing this. I'm gonna use only sphagnum moss because I want retention and uh, wicking to be max. I want it maxed out. So we're gonna use only sphagnum moss and on top we are going to use bark to prevent cyanobacteria, which will form if I'm not careful. Whenever there is light and moisture, there is cyanobacteria here in this climate. And it's not an algae, it is cyano. It smells like cyano, it acts like cyano. It's cyano, I hate cyano. Right, so, just gonna put sphagnum moss around really, really fast. I do like clay pots, you guys. I just don't like caring for them quite at all. They give me nightmares sometimes. Or if I use them too excessively. Or if I don't have an automated watering system. <laughs> Other than that, they're fine. <laughs> I do like them. They like how they look. Uh, they're just not for me. And I have a whole lot of them on the terrace. Maybe now I can get to use them a little bit, right? So, I'm gonna put quite a bit of sphagnum moss. Even if you press down on sphagnum moss in clay pots, it doesn't matter because clay is so porous that the orchid breathes. It doesn't matter how much you compress the sphagnum moss. I'm not really compressing it much, but I am compressing it slightly more than I would in a plastic pot because I want to have medium here. If I make it too airy, there won't be enough medium. Okay, so enough moss. I still have moss left. Let's go on and put some bark on top. And then I will add the wick. And by the way, these orchids are coming from Equahenera. They have a whole bunch of the Androbium Cuthbertsoni hybrids. More that I've seen anywhere at other nurseries. The problem is they're not very cheap. Did you notice? Equahenera in the US is much cheaper than the German one. Maybe it's because they're importing from the U, actually from Ecuador, they're importing and probably it's the phytosanitary certificates and all of that. Maybe they increase the cost 
of the final product. I think that's the problem. But yeah, they're not cheap, these guys. That's why I only got two. But I love them. I love them so much. I want to have more of them. Spoilers, I did get more of them. This video was shot a few weeks ago, actually. And another spoiler, these Cuthbertonis are actually doing great and the red one is almost about to bloom. Stay tuned for a new video on these guys in the following weeks. I just hope that they survive in my environment. And P.S. when I purchased them, they did not have the buds. Maybe one of them had a bud forming, but all of the other buds, this one has buds as well, all of the other buds and the flowers, they happened in my care. Giving me all of this hope. Oh, and by the way, you will ask me, is it okay to repot them while they're in bloom? Well, yes, it's sphagnum moss. As you saw, I didn't disturb the roots in any way. The roots were not attached to anything. It's like they didn't even feel it. So it's absolutely fine, don't worry. It's moss. Moss is magic. <laughs> Alrighty. So I think I covered all of the available spaces for cyano to form. Okay, and now let us add the wick. Now the wick is this. I have a microfiber mop head that I keep taking pieces off when I need them. I also cut them in half to make them thinner. I don't need um, thick wicks. And I find microfiber is the best type of wick. So what I do is just put it a little bit through the drain at all and then with the use of a bamboo skewer, just push it up a little bit and hey presto, it stays. We do not need the wick to be swirling inside the medium or anything of the source because sphagnum moss is so wicking, in some instances more wicking than soil. It's just so wicking and the clay pot is really, really wicking as well. That all it needs is just for a few strands to have contact with anything wet, that everything gets wet. Everything transfers the moisture and distributes it evenly. So I don't need to swirl the wick inside or put it, you know, in a certain way. I just needed to touch the moss somewhere. That is it. And it's really easy to pull it out and wash it at the sink if it gets bacteri bacteria, if it gets cyanobacteria or algae or anything. Really easy to reuse. Um, I love these wicks and I love the color. It looks good under the barinas. Right. So now I am going to put back the tag and I'm going to add some pure reverse osmosis water weight. Which is the front of the orchid? Which one looks better? I don't know. Okay, like this. So I'm going to use only reverse osmosis water now. There is no need to use fertilizer. Um, I will start fertilizing them when I see new growth. Right now I'm not actually fertilizing these orchids. The canes are almost fully mature, so there isn't a lot of very strong vegetative growth at the moment. I'm happy to see those roots, but we do have fertilizer reserved or re reserves. So I'm a little scared of using too much fertilizer. I do believe this was one of the mistakes that I did with my previous Cuthbert Sony. Maybe I over fertilized it. I don't even remember if I used slow release fertilizer. Yeah, that was a mistake. Uh, many, many sources suggest that these guys are quite sensitive and they really don't need all that much fertilizer. So I'm gonna pipe down on the fertilizer situation. I'm gonna offer it maybe once a month, quarter strength, MSU, which is a complete menu fertilizer. I'm going to dilute it only in reverse osmosis water and hopefully we shall do okay. So yeah, this is the little setup that I wanted to show you guys. I think it looks absolutely beautiful and I think it goes well with the clay pots, which do tend to dry out pretty fast. So I hope this is inspiring for you guys. If you like terracotta and maybe you do well with terracotta, but you'd like it to stay a little bit more moist, maybe. I don't know, this looks like a great setup. Obviously, you will not find the same size materials as me. This was found locally, but I'm sure you can find something that will fit like in the same manner. It doesn't have to look the same, right? Just use this as inspiration. I hope it will work out. I don't promise that I will keep this setup. It's just very cute and I felt the need to try it out and show it to you guys. I'm sure for some of you it will work out great. <gasps> African violets. It's gonna work out with African violets so well, so well. You just need to stay on top of the accumulations at the bottom as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I cannot promise I will keep this set up, but I will give it a good try and I'll keep you up to date. Uh, but yeah, it's not one of those setups that I know how to work with. It's just something I'm trying out and I think it's cute. 
and I want more Cuspertonis. Spoilers. Um, I have this blind faith in my new cool grower setup. I don't know why. So I will have a few more Cuspertoni coming and some Sarcochylus orchids. Sarcochylus, I love them. I think I love all the Australian orchids. I don't know. I think you guys have amazing orchids. I want them. <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna have some sarcochylus coming at some point as well. Sarcochylus are not necessarily cool growers. They can tolerate cool temperatures. I don't know if they're hot growers, to be fully honest, but I have a feeling I can do well with sarcochylus as well, with a few adjustments. I love them so much. I've always wanted to have a collection of sarcochylus, but I never knew what I did wrong. Maybe I know what it was. It wasn't a culture thing, I think it was the thrips and I think it was a combination of uh, oil, anyway. Long story short, I have faith that I can do well with sarcochylus and I can make them bloom as well. So we're gonna have some cosbertonis and some sarcochylus coming soon. I'm gonna keep them all in my cool growing side with the little air cooler which is like such a good friend. I love the guy. <laughs> I think he's gonna save my orchids. Uh, so yeah, wish me luck because I'm attempting the impossible <laughs> in this climate. Right, I'll keep you up to date nonetheless. If you see these guys potted in something else in a month, don't be surprised. That's all I'm saying. But the setup is so cute, isn't it? I love it. I think it's so cute. I really hope it works out for you guys because it's just the dwarves. It's a dwarves. All right, thank you guys so much for watching Enough Blabbing. I'll see you next time and I wish you great success with these setups that maybe you decide to attempt. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.